Osama, dare I mention his name, has been trying to get a hold of me and has been persistent. There's a, there's a special feature that's called block. Hey, there's a funky odor coming from the back. What's up with that? So anyway, so what's, what's new? Hey everybody, welcome back to 9 Day The Single Life. So we are on episode 3 and we are going to do Chantel first. So Chantel and her friends are hanging out by the pool when they bring up Giannis, who we all know is also soccer babe. But it seems like everybody's a fan of him, including me, because you know, he is so fine. But somebody in my last comment said that he's just average, but as you know, I don't agree. He can do no wrong in my eyes, well, at least for now, because we don't know how he's going to turn out later. So then we found out that he invited them to come to his hometown which is four hours away the issue is this on the other side of the island and how far do we actually have to go four hours but it's gonna be an experience and if i was there i wouldn't really complain because i love a good world trip but i could see how they would kind of be like upset because it's like four hours there four hours back and they don't really even know the guy Okay, this what are we here for? We're here to find nice men at this resort. At this resort! And to be honest, I don't know why Chantel is going this far for Giannis. Because I thought this whole trip was kind of like, I don't know, kind of like a, a whole phase. You know, go there, have fun, get with as many guys as you want, and then come back. But it seems like, to me, she's looking for love, love. So, in the end, they decide to support her and go to see her soccer babe. So, the crew gets ready and they're on their way to see Giannis when Chantel gets a message from him for the place and time to meet. Him. And so they start doing the math and they realize that they won't get there on time So they all start to panic because they realize that they have to get her ready in the car But then I thought that she kind of really looked good in the car But I could see how sitting there for three almost four hours You start to like kind of look sweaty and maybe like your hair is out of place and so on But one friend is doing her hair I think it's like the hairdresser She's doing her hair while Destiny's grabbing clothes in the back And Mooney's doing her makeup and they're doing all of this while the van is still moving And I'm like Damn, because that's really impressive because I could never. It's already hard enough for me to do my makeup and my hair like sitting at home, but in a moving van, there's no way. So that's where her episode ends. So let's look at Veronica and Tim. Well, this episode is more of a Tim episode. We don't really get any like views of Veronica. So Tim is getting ready to go on his date with Louisa and they're going to go play crochet. And I never really played crochet before, but it seems... Honestly, I can't even say it seems fun. It kind of seems kind of boring. But then they meet each other and then they both realize that neither of them can play. So I'm just like, why was this a first date type of thing? I don't know. Mm, why does my ball keep going that way? <laughs> that was good. I think maybe this club is broken. Did I just hit my own ball? <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> so Louisa really likes Tim. And I mean, she really, really, really likes Tim. And I don't know why. I, I, I generally don't get it, okay? So she says that she's been waiting to have a day with him after they stopped talking three years ago, which is crazy to me. Like, they weren't even... I don't obviously they haven't met each other so they weren't sleeping together so we can't say like it's his like his ding dong that's like bringing them back but what is going on with this Tim thing so Tim really likes Louisa as well Tim asks her out on a date in Spanish well on a second date and she says yes so that's where the episode ends let's move on to Natalie so Natalie finally has a place to live yay I was honestly worried for her so to see this is such a relief for her safety and well-being and it's all thanks to Josh <laughs> shocker not really so they were able to get him as a guarantor and put like a bit more money down to get the house i think i honestly i couldn't even follow along with how the process worked but i'm just glad that it worked while they were very happy celebrating natalie's mom said that they couldn't invite michael over and i'm shocked because what like why and obviously Natalie's shocked too you can just tell by her face that she does not like the idea and I I genuinely don't like the idea too because why would you want your ex-husband to come over to your house that your new boyfriend got you like it doesn't make sense but Natalie explains that her mom just has like a lot of love for Michael but with Josh in her life now she's kind of excited for her mom to get no Josh and kind of like move on from Michael so they're all going to have dinner together and Josh is nervous but excited because he wants to make a good impression after you know not sure 
showing up at the airport. So they meet up and everything's going good and Natalie is interpreting the conversation between Josh and her mom because her mom doesn't speak English that fluently. Did she, did she get in trouble a lot? Did you get in trouble a lot? So they're having a good time and Natalie's mom says she wants a good and reliable man for her daughter. It's hard to translate what she says about Just get, you give her your best. She wants me to be with someone reliable. And Natalie says that if Josh disappoints her this time, then he will not just be disappointing her, but also her mom as well. And if he disappoints her mom, it'll be like over this time, like over, over. So that's where Natalie's episode ends. Now let's move on to Debbie. So Debbie and her son Julian are going out and they're having a conversation and Debbie brings up Osama. And she's saying like Osama keeps trying to reach out to her and Julian brings up that there's a block button and she can use that to just block him. And I said this the last episode too, like, I don't know why she just doesn't block Osama. He has been trying to get a hold of me and has been persistent. There's a, there's a special feature that's called block. Is there's a funky odor coming from the back. What's up with that? Someone did go to the bathroom on themselves back there. So anyway, so what's what's new? She just switches the conversation to something else. I'm like, like, why doesn't she want to block Osama? Obviously, it's because she likes the attention. And now she's just putting on shades because she's probably relieved that she dodged that question. So she tells him that she's been online dating again. And Julian's mad because he obviously doesn't want a repeat of another Osama. But Debbie reassures him that it's a guy from here, as in America, and his name is Russ. And he's actually close to her age. I'm like, is that the standard now? Like, do we have to say that now? But because because it's Debbie, we kind of have to. Well, Debbie drops a bomb that she lied about her age to him and she told him that she was 57 instead of 67. <sighs> Why Debbie? Oh my goodness. I don't, I don't know why she makes, she causes problems for herself. The guy is 60 by the way and I feel like uh, he's 60. Why would you lie and say you're 57 when you're 67? Like the age gap is close at this point. Nobody would want to meet me because That is everybody... not true. There's a million 67 no, years old. I, I believe nobody wants Miss Debbie if she's 67 years old. So anyways, Debbie's now getting ready for a day with Russ and I'm thinking with all these nice dresses and coats that they're gonna go have a nice dinner or something special, but it's just mini golf. And I'm like, why are you dressing like that to mini golf? But I never ate my words up so fast cause she looked good. Like she looks so cute. And you know, I don't really like Debbie that much, but she knows how to dress, okay? So I might say it's tacky, but she has a type of style that I like. I wouldn't wear it myself, but I like it. So she meets up with Russ and he's just as happy as I was when he sees her. <laughs> My name is Russ. I'm 60 years old and I'm from Covington, Georgia. Let's go play some golf. Go play golf. I met Debbie online probably five, six days ago. We went back and forth, back and forth. Then here we are. I love your outfit, by the way. And they look like they're having a really great time mini golfing. Then Debbie finally tells Russ that she was 67 instead of 57. And Russ didn't really look phased at all. In fact, he said that age is just a number. Which got me thinking if Russ also had like an Asama, like a girl version in his life as well. Like trying to get with like a 24 year old girl. I don't know, but okay. Don't worry about it. It's okay. It's just a number. You? When Debbie told me she was 67 instead of 57, it was surprising. She lied, but I also get it. So after golfing, they go get a drink and Debbie tells Russ all the tea about her and Osama. And I'm like, Debbie, what are you doing? Oh my goodness. So I talk a lot and I mean a lot and I be saying things I shouldn't be saying, but even I knew I wouldn't say that, especially on the first date. So Russ is shocked obviously that he's from morocco and him being 24 and debbie going through all of this and that but he's mostly shocked that he's learning all of this on the first date and like yeah duh anybody will be shocked too and all i'm thinking is debbie you're going to scare this man away like shut up please but luckily he said he's still interested in going out with her on a second date so i guess a win is a win but i'm thinking like you saw all those red flags and you still said you're interested in going out with her on a second date like i generally feel like if that's the case he's a red flag or because she asked him if he could go on a second date with her he's like let me just say yes because all these cameras are looking at me and i don't want anything bad to happen i don't know is either one or the other but that's where debbie's episode ends and that's where this video ends too so let me know about your thoughts and your comments about chantelle tam natalie and especially debbie because i don't know what's going on with all of that so leave all your thoughts in the comments and make sure to like and subscribe and thanks for watching bye